Hey guys, on this week's episode of Fish Addictions TV, we got a special one in store for you. Now, everybody knows if you've watched our show that some of our biggest things that we want to do in the fishing world is get kids involved. And our pro staffer, Nancy Kep, does that better than anybody else in Minnesota. And we truly do <laughs> believe that. Now, let us know what we're doing here. What are we going to be following along? Today you're following along on my youth fishing league that we have. It's been Monday nights. This is week seven, uh, championship night. So we calculate all the scores that the kids have accumulated over the course of six weeks. Um, they get points for all the fish that they catch. So tonight's a big night. Um, you're following along all the kids, seeing them in the boat, seeing the excitement. They're pumped up. You can probably hear some of them in the background. They're excited to get on the lake and start fishing tonight. Now one of the cool things I think that this AAL offers is We've got parents in the boat with their kids. We've got parents in the boat with friends as kids. You know, we've got adults teaching kids how to fish and why we're doing what we're doing. And that's kind of the point of this whole thing, isn't it? It is. It's to teach the kids about fishing and get them learning more. Not only do we have parents, but we have an uncle here that's taking out his nephews. We have grandparents that are involved in it. So it's really all aspects of bringing the family together, getting them on the water and teaching the kids a lifetime of learning. Guys, this is one episode that you're not going to want to miss. You're going to see lots of smiles, lots of fish, and you're just going to see the chaos that happens in the boat when you have the kids. It's going to be a great one. It is. It's going to be good. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. Addiction. The fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. An addiction is not desirable. It is something that overtakes your life. What happens when an addiction cannot be stopped? An addiction is stronger than any one drug with only one cure. The cure is not rehab. It is not medication. It is not a counselor. The only cure for us is the water beneath our feet. The rod in our hands, the anticipation of that next big bite, and the camaraderie we all share. This is Fish Addictions TV. Fish Addictions TV is brought to you by Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear and the rest of our fine sponsors. This is our sixth week of the Youth Fishing League. It's the American Angler Youth Fishing League. We have 15 kids right now in the league. As the tournament director, it is an absolute blast seeing these kids grow over the years into the fishermen that they have become. They have really expanded on a lot of their skills. They're trying different techniques. So it's fun to watch them grow. A lot of the kids, sometimes it's their first time getting out and doing this. I've had some kids that have been with me now for probably three years. Their parents go with them or they have a grandparent that goes with. I believe one boat has an uncle that's with them. So you're really getting not only the kids involved in fishing, but you're also getting the parents involved to getting them outside, taking them outside and showing them the true sport of fishing. It's pretty cool being able to take my mom and my brother out fishing also a couple of his friends. Being able to see all the kids catch a bunch of fish and get the next generation of fishing started is pretty cool.
Oh man, these boys are on fire tonight. It's one after another. This is why I have Evan come help me because with just myself in the boat trying to take care of these three boys, yeah, sometimes it's not good. <laughs> I know I started fishing at a super young age and that now I love to fish all the time. So being able to take those kids out and get them started is gonna get them addicted to fishing too. Fishing with Dancy is a lot of fun because I get to fish with most of my friends and fishing is a great sport. Oh, good job, buddy. You know, one thing, let's get this undone, that we can teach kids at an early age is, you know, Jake's probably been on the water just as much as any other kid, and he'll show you how to grab these sunfish just right. See how he slides his hand down like that? That's just something that these kids can learn by this experience. It's really fun to get these kids to learn how to handle these fish properly because part of the a bad experience on fishing in general is if they get poked by those fins and that kind of stuff. Now, can you let them go nice? And then teaching kids how to release fish properly. You know, they're not gonna do it perfect every time. That's not what we're out here for. We're out here to just teach kids little by little the art of fishing, because this is an art, all the way from baiting hooks to unhooking their fish properly, to holding the fish properly, to releasing properly. That's all part of learning and loving fishing. Good job, buddy. We just pulled up on another team and it looks like they're hooked up. They're fishing smallmouth bass is what they're telling us. He's hooked up, get over there. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. At Glacier, our goal is to build only the highest quality ice fishing shelters, constructed of premium materials that will provide lasting value and years of trouble-free service. See for yourself how our attention to detail and never-ending commitment to product improvement sets a Glacier Ice House apart from the competition and makes a Glacier Ice House the ultimate way to play. For more information, visit GlacierIceHouse.com. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats.
Rob, worms look like caterpillars. They kind of look like caterpillar. I think it's a June. I think it's a June bug. Oops. It's it's good to get the, the kids out and fishing and uh, you know, interacting with other adults and other kids that uh, might teach them something else and might show them a different way of fishing. This would be good. We could kill it. Drop anchor here. You know, it's just a, it's a good opportunity. Any time out on the boat is better than not fishing. All right, what we're doing out here is we're cutting the leeches actually in half. So there's a little smaller piece on there. It actually, it's better for the kids because it's easier for them to put on. And I think the leech stays on there a little bit better having um, a smaller piece, especially since we're fishing for sunfish than a whole big leech because they're just gonna chomp on the parts that are hanging out of the hook. So this way when the fish bites it, it's getting the whole hook, the leech and everything. Yep, just keep tension in the rod tip up. You're doing great. You know, really it's uh, the excitement of catching a fish. I mean, whether it's fishing with another adult or fishing with my son um, or any of the kids that we take out fishing, you know, the look on their face when they're reeling in the fish and the surprise and, and the sense of accomplishment that they get is pretty stellar. Oh, it's another pike. This Ooh, one's it's big, a, it's, a good, it's a good one. Right over here. Okay. Good He's job. Spicy. 20. About almost just, 24. Just about 24 inches. All right, you want to really nice and easy let them back? Yeah. Good job, bud. Big. It's not a nine. They're looking for a nine incher because if they're over a certain length, you get bonus points. So they always want the sunfish to be at least nine inches so they get those 10 extra bonus points. What's this all about? They're, it's kind of like a little competition for the kids, but friendly, right? It is, it's like a friendly, tournament for the kids. I like to just call it a league night, so it's not so competitive, because you know it's all about fun. It's just about getting the kids out here. Two of these kids are my friend's kids that I chose to take with this year, Sataya's company, and they just come out here and have fun. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. Out here, speed is everything. The new Eskimo rocket runs fast, spins fast, cuts fast. Engineered from the ground up with an engine designed to run at optimal RPMs, giving you its fullest potential within its power band. The bulletproof all-metal transmission is geared to spin fast. The precision-based cutting head effortlessly cuts fast. Nobody sells more powered ice augers than Eskimo. Get assurance. Get reliability. Get Eskimo. No matter what you're chasing on the ice this winter, Acme Tackle has you covered. From the innovative Hyperglide and Hyper Rattle series to legendary Castmaster, Rattle Master, and Sidewinder Spoons, or the all-new professional gray tungsten series, Acme Tackle has what you need. Visit acmetackle.com to check out our full product assortment. Acme Tackle. Rattles louder, glides further, and glows brighter. Get hooked up with Acme Tackle. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. 
podcast or blast, Reeds has the best service, best advice, and best price guaranteed. Bemidji, Minnesota. Tonight's going to be a special night for the kids because what I have done is I've taken their points over all the different weeks that we have fished and I accumulated it and came up with one grand total. So then what I'm going to do at the end of the night is add their totals in they get tonight and then we'll have like our grand champion first place team finishers. As a group, all of you guys together, your fish totals for the whole entire year were 1,397 sunfish, 31 perch, 90 bass, 16 northerns, and two walleyes. So I'm gonna say that's pretty impressive for a whole season of fishing. And these poor boys have been in second place for like three times during the course of this league. And this week they finally brought home the big fish total with 40.3 points. 40.3 points. Ty, Brady, and Noah. So just try to make it a fun night for them, make it feel like it's really special for them. We don't want fishing, hunting, and the outdoors to be a dying old man's sport. And the more we can get younger anglers and hunters uh, in, I mean, that's, that's the next generation. So the more we can do to get them excited about keeping the sport alive, keeping the traditions alive, the better. You know, organizations such as this, kids fishing leagues around the state, uh, things have really taken off in the last couple of years, and uh, it's just fantastic to see it. Not only do I take the kids fishing in the summertime, but I also think it's really important that they get to experience ice fishing. So in the winter, I go out to the fifth grade class at the high school in Minnewaska and I teach a class. It's a nine week program through the Minnesota DNR called Minaqua. And it's based on the kids science class, so it really gets a little bit more in depth. It's not just all about how to fish, but it's more about learning about the fish. When we're done with our nine weeks in the classroom, then what I do is I get to take the kids all ice fishing. For a lot of these kids, they've never been ice fishing before, so this is really something fun that they can do, something that they can experience, because a lot of kids have not experienced this. So it's fun to get them out here, uh, show them how electronics work, show them how an uh, underwater camera works, so to give them that opportunity to get out here, look at stuff, experience it, and just enjoy a beautiful day on the lake. All right, I'm sitting here with Weston. He's a fifth grader. He got to fish with me this summer. All right, tell me a little bit about the fish you caught. What happened? Um, so uh, I was jigging, I look over, yep. and then it pulls down. I pull it right up, and then got it, got it, got it. Reel up, nine, 10 inch crappie. Rock star. So today was great. We had a lot of kids having fun, laughing, smiling, showing their fish, uh, joking with their friends. You could just tell with the atmosphere that everybody was having a blast. There's gonna be many stories to come and for the next year's kids to be enthused about coming and joining this experience out on the ice. So when you caught those crappies, did you see the lateral line? Yes. What have you known it was a lateral line if you went to saw that in class? Um, 
If I didn't know what it was in line, I thought it would just be a design on the fish. Yep, here, there you go. A big part of this program and me doing this is my helpers that were out here today. If I didn't have my helpers coming out here to drill holes and get the table set up, get the shelter set up, all of that stuff, I could never do this by myself. So they are a huge help and without them I could not do this program. So hopefully next year I'll continue my program both in the summer and the winter and I can influence more kids to get in the outdoors. Hi, this is Nancy with Fish Addictions. I have a quick tip for you on how to keep your bait living a little bit longer in the summertime. During the summer, it gets hot. The water temperature is gonna obviously be warmer than it is in the wintertime. Uh, when you leave the bait shop with your minnows in your bag, if you're going to your resort that you're staying at, you maybe have a bucket that's floating off the dock that you're gonna put your minnows in. I always suggest to my customers that they put a rock in the minnow bucket. So th what that does is it's gonna take your minnow bucket and float it to the bottom of the lake. The bottom of the lake is gonna be a lot cooler than the top of the lake. So your minnows are gonna be able to last a little longer. When that sun beats down in your minnow bucket, more than likely after three, four hours, your minnows are all gonna die. Um, if you're going right to your boat, I always suggest when you have a bag of minnows such as this, when you leave the bait shop and you have your minnows and you're going to your destination where you're going to be going fishing, don't just throw your minnows in your live well once you get the water into your live well or your bait well. Make sure that you're acclimating them beforehand because um, the water temperature here at, at the bait shop or at your local bait shop where you're getting your minnows from is not going to be the same as the water temperature on the lake that you're going fishing on. So you always want to make sure that you're acclimating them. Most of the minnows do fairly well, but when you're buying shiners, for example, you're paying seven, eight dollars a dozen for them usually. You want to make sure that they're going to live. So it's very important that you acclimate them to the water while, while you're fishing. I would say a good 10 to 15 minutes is going to be perfect for making sure they're acclimated. Then at that time, you can open them up, dump them in there, and your minnows are going to last a lot longer throughout the day. So this is just a quick tip on how to get your minnows to last longer. What I would tell you know any other parent or any kids to get involved in a program like this is that you know don't be intimidated. It's so simple. It's really not all that competitive. It's about coming out, getting the kids on some fish, having fun, sharing tips, sharing stories, and really having a good time in a really relaxed atmosphere. You know, probably one of the coolest things that you get out of a situation like this is teaching. You know, Jake's in here in the box wondering about colors and why we use colors and. This gives you that opportunity to let him pick it, but let him know why we choose what colors and, and what scenarios we're using colors in, whether it's sunny or cloudy. And they, I mean, granted, the next time you go out, they might forget that, but the more you tell them and the more you just let them know why we're doing what we're doing, the better chance that they're gonna pick this up and really run with it. And we pull up on this boat behind us, which is in this league, and you've got the two adults in the boat just coaching these kids and just, and just really, just letting them know why they're doing what they're doing and just giving them little tips, but letting the kids do it. Letting the kids learn because if they don't do it and they don't perform what we're asking them, they're not going to know it. And you know, we can't do it for them. Letting them, letting them learn and just coaching is definitely the best way to do it. We don't want to push them. We just want to coach them. A lot of people ask me why I do this, why I put so much effort into the kids and the youth and getting them in the outdoors. 
It's because when I go to a basketball game and those kids come up to me and they say, Miss Nancy, Miss Nancy, guess what I caught last weekend? And they tell me all about the fish they caught, how big it was, they tell me the whole story. That's what brings me my pride and that's why I do it, is for those kids to come up and tell me their stories and share that passion because I know I just influenced that kid that is coming to share his story with me. Being a teacher in the classroom and being able to talk to these kids, so many of them don't know anything about fishing and for me to be able to go in there and teach them that if I can get five kids that have never fished before and if I can get them to share the same passion I have for the sport and turn them on to fishing fishing or hunting just getting them in the outdoors I feel like I made a successful season Behind me is the frog pond and the kids will go in there either before and or after and catch a bunch of frogs and they enjoy doing that. It's disgusting but they still seem to go in there every week when we're done fishing. A lot of them like to jump in the lake and go swimming.